When you look at this sign right here, where do you see yourself? All these tribes, where do you see yourself? So-called Black America. Okay, understood. And your name again, brother? My name is Dante. Dante? Josiah. Good to meet you, Dante. So I thought the same thing, Dante. I said to myself, you know what? I'm a Black African American. Before I came into knowledge of this truth, that's what I thought. But it's important for us to come out here and teach you the truth according to the Bible, right? Get Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Bring it out. Because I want to show you what the Most High God thinks of you, right? You're not black. That's a color in the crayon box. You're not an African American. Those names came from two Caucasian men. Africa from Leo Sipius Africanus and America from Amerigo Vespucci. That's an Italian settler. So if you and I look the same way, have the same hair texture, same, same skin complexion, how we get our Caucasian, our, our, our nationality, or our heritage from two Caucasian men? It don't make no sense, right? You see what I'm saying, Dante? Go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Bible says, Dante, you are a holy people. All right? We're going to get what it means to be holy. Get Leviticus 20 and 26. Because it's important for you to know what the Most High thinks of you. Forget about what the world say. Forget about the pictures that the media paints of you. Uh, us as a people, super predators. Thugs, all of that stuff they call us, that's not what the Most High God calls us, right? Go ahead. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse 26. Uh -huh. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, uh -huh. and have severed you from other people, that ye shall be mine. So the Lord has severed us. He separated us, right, from other people, from other nations. But everybody tells us it's equality. How is it equality when we the ones out in the streets getting shot down? Right. You don't see other nations going through that. You don't see other nations. The, the, the deputy just knocked on the brother's door recently. He opened the door and the deputy just fired. Said he had something in his hand. His hand looked like a gun to him. This is the type of stuff, Dante, that happens to our people. Right? Go ahead. Back to uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Verse 6. For Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people into the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people into himself. So the Lord thy God, Dante, have chosen you to be a special people unto himself. Go ahead. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above all people, Dante. Ain't you been taught that we've been all equal? We all the same? Ain't that the narrative that they've been pushing? That's what we've been taught. But what does the Bible say? Read that one more time. Have chosen thee to be a special people and to himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. How that sound to you, Dante? You above all people on the face of the earth. That's what the Most High God said in his word. That's what the word said. I didn't make that up. This brother didn't make that up. That's right. That came right out according to the Bible, Dante. Tell me that don't change your perspective on things. Because if our people knew that we was a special people above all people, how would we treat one another, Dante? Bring it out. We're supposed to treat each other as kings and queens anyway, brother. We are. We are. <laughs> but because we don't respect, know this. Respect this brings respect to you. Absolutely. But that respect will come if we knew who we are. We subscribe, our brothers and sisters in this world, subscribe to this image as Christ. And they say it don't matter what color he is. Why it matters is because people that look like this can walk through this neighborhood at any time of day and be the safest person out here. Right. No harm, nothing will come to them. But brothers and sisters that look like you and I can walk through this neighborhood and they will see some strife. They will see conflict. Who is this brother? What colors he got on? What's he doing out here? You see what I'm saying? But this person don't. Why? Because they painted this image as the Savior. If they painted this image as the Savior, then you don't see this image in yourself. Bring it out. That's why it's important to know the true image of Christ. Did you know the true image of Christ, Dante? Understood. Understood. We all went to church. I went to Baptist church. And it was wicked as hell. Because they promoted this image right here. But we're going to show you according to the Bible. We'll get that Revelations 1 and 1. We're going to show you according to the Bible the true image of Christ. Because our people have to see that image in themselves. 
going to bring out this image, and I got one more thing for you, Dante. You with me? You good? Yes, sir. Go ahead. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The revelations of Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is John the Revelator on the island of Patmos, and he's getting ready to reveal something, okay? That's what the root word of revelation is, to reveal. All right, go ahead. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. So he's getting ready to show things which must shortly come to pass. Just for time's sake, jump to 14. Verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hair were white like wool. When you feel the hair texture on your head, Dante, like I'm feeling my beard, and you can see what all the other brothers out here, what texture hair do we have? Wool, woolly, right? Okay, so that image doesn't add up, right? Go ahead. As white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire because Christ drank wine, but he drank it in moderation, meaning he didn't get drunk. Remember, he walked the earth for 33 years and never sinned. So that's what it's talking about with the eyes of flame of fire. You can read down Genesis 49 and 12. Go ahead. And his feet like it's a fine brass. What color would you say brass is, Dante? Brown. Brown, right? Now, watch. You're going to take that a step further. Go ahead. As if they burn in a furnace. So take that brown brass and put a lighter to it. What color you have, Dante? Brown. Brown? Well, remember, you said it was brown before. Now, I'm getting ready to take the lighter to it. So, after I take the lighter to that fine brown brass, what color is it going to turn? Black. Black, meaning that Christ was a very dark-skinned man. A very, very dark-skinned man. Now, we just read all that out of the Bible, right? Where does this image fit in? You see that? You see what they did? They changed the image. Verse Maccabees 3 and 41. Bring it up. They changed the image, Dante. So we wouldn't recognize that this is a representation of the true image of the Messiah. Right. This image, not this. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. TV. Download the app today. Shalom. All right, go ahead. This is the book of First Maccabees in the Apocrypha, chapter um chapter four in verse forty one. Three and forty one. Chapter three in verse forty one. Forty. This is the book of this is the book of this is the book of First Maccabees chapter three in verse forty eight. Uh -huh. And lay open the book of the law, uh -huh. wherein the heathens had sought to paint. Uh, the likeness of their images. So the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their image, which is this. Okay? So, how y'all young brothers doing? Y'all good? What's your name? Jeremiah? One more thing before you leave, John because I, I, I saw something, and I want to address it. If I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't actually mention this to you. So I noticed that you got this in, in your hand. So let me ask you. So obviously you smoke, right? What is it that leads you to smoke? What, what What's going on that that causes you to smoke, or why do you smoke, if you don't mind me asking? Since I was 11 years old, man. Since you're 11 years old? So what goes into that? What does the smoking do for you? Keep me mellow. Keep you mellow? Okay, I'm gonna read one scripture for you, Dante, and if you don't, uh, you still listening over there, get wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. Pick it up. Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. Dante, I want you to hear this, because a lot of our brothers and sisters, we catching hell out here. Day in and day out, we catching hell. So we go to many different vices to deal with that, right? But we're going to read what the Bible says will heal you, all right? Go ahead. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 12. Uh -huh. For it was neither herbs nor mollifying pastors. So, Dante, if you can hear me, the scripture is saying it was neither a herb nor mollifying plaster, meaning the weed, go ahead, that restored them to hell. But thy word, O oh Lord, which heal all things. We're going to read it one more time. Dante, I want you to hear this. We're going to read it one more time. Do you, young brothers, do y'all brothers smoke by chance? No? All praises to the Most High. But we're going to get this scripture because Dante had something in his hand. And I want y'all brothers to know when y'all see brothers that smoke, or if you ever think about smoking, most of the time, brothers and sisters that smoke is because they're dealing with something. They're going through a lot of stress. They're going through some things. So they're looking for something to help them deal with that. But here's what the scripture says. Go ahead. 
Verse 12. Uh -huh. For it was neither earth nor mollifying pastors uh -huh. that restored them to health. So it's not the smoke. It's not the marijuana that will restore us to health. But it is. Go ahead. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. But the word of God that healeth all things. That's what brings us back to health. Not the smoke. Not the other vices that we go to. All right? Now. I did, Y'all can come under the, the tent. Y'all come, come, brothers, come on in. How you doing, sis? Doing good? Yeah. My name's Josiah. Your name, sis? Demetrius. Demetrius? Good to meet you, Demetrius. And young brothers, I, I got to catch your name one more time. Antonio? Antonio? Jemiah. Okay, all praises to the Most High. So, do y'all know who y'all are according to the Bible, y'all nationality? If I was to ask you, sis, like, what would you say your nationality is? Yes. Like if you was filling out a job application, what would you check? Black? Okay. What about y'all young brothers? What would you say? Black? Black. That's what we've been taught. Okay. Understood. So, I want y'all to come over here to this chart, and I want y'all to take a look at this. And I want y'all to see the names that we've been given on this side, and these are the names that the Most High God calls us. So, if you say that you're so-called black, 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 right? Now, let me ask another question. Is your mom or your dad black, or is it both? Okay, same with you. Okay, thank you. So, father black, there's a reason I'm asking that, okay? Because our people tend to have this preconceived notion that they could be mixed. One period Puerto Rican, one black, so they say I'm half black, I'm half Puerto Rican, but I want to read to you in the Bible how we determine our nationality, all right? Get that numbers 1 to 18. Because it's important we know that. We're not going to go to no Ancestry.com and get I'm a quarter French or 2% Cherokee. The Most High God makes it very, very simple for us. Go ahead. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. Uh -huh. And they assemble all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declare their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So the pedigrees was determined by the house of their fathers. Okay? So our nationality, our lineage comes from our fathers. Right. You understand? There's no half and half. Okay? So... It's important that y'all know that. Now, y'all learned today that you will be Israelites from the tribe of Judah. Okay? Why is that important? I'll tell you. The greatest man that ever walked the face of this earth was from that same tribe. Do y'all know who I'm talking about? Jesus. Jesus Christ. We're going to get that. Uh, Hebrews 7 and 14. We're going to get that out of the Bible for you. Because it's important you know who the Messiah is. The true image of the Messiah. Not just the image that we've been given, we have to know the truth. Okay, go ahead. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. Uh -huh. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, uh -huh. of which tribe Moses sprang nothing concerning priesthood. So our Lord sprang out of Judah. Okay, so if Christ sprang out of Judah, who did the people of the same tribe spring from or look like? Jeremiah 14 and 2. Because this is important. We, we looking at this. How many of y'all saw this image before? You saw this image before? Who does the world tell you this is? Christ. Did you see the movie Passion of the Christ? No. I didn't watch it. Did you? Did you? You ain't see it? Okay. That image is a representation of this, right? But Christ is from the tribe of Judah. Let's read what the other people of the tribe of Judah look like. Go ahead. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Judah mourning uh -huh. and the gates there of language. Uh -huh. They are black. They are Caucasian. They are black. They are Italian. They are black uh -huh. unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. So this is showing you that this image is off. Christ was a dark-skinned man from the tribe of Judah and looked like this. Right. How important is that for us to know? Very important for us to know. Okay? So y'all learn today, if not anything else, that y'all are Israelites from the tribe of Judah. Okay? So why we are out here, you see all the brothers in the purple, is because we're out here to teach the Most High God's lost sheep. 
to return back to his law, statutes, and commandments. Get Isaiah 58 and 1. I know you had you holding that before. Isaiah 58 and 1. Because a lot of people might look at the purple and see, oh, why are these brothers out here? We are out here to teach this glorious gospel to our people. Because something happened to us where we lost the laws, lost our heritage, right? Go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Cry out loud, uh -huh. spare not, lift up thy breast like a trumpet, uh -huh. and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. So show my people their transgressions. Do y'all know what transgressions means? And it's okay if you don't. Okay? Okay. All praises, all praises, because we're going to get the right definition according to the Bible. Okay? Uh, 1 John 3 and 4. We're going to show you what the definition is, because there's perceptions. I could ask any of y'all what y'all think sin is, and what would you say? Something you do wrong. Okay. We all family out here. You don't know? Oh, good. Okay. So we're going to get it according to the Bible. All right? Go ahead. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the law. When we go against the law, that's where the sin comes in. Men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation 